In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the Worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, and I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his last and greatest messenger. And in the name of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. We need a savior. Without one that has vision or one that has direction and one that knows how to save us, we cannot be saved. So if it be the will of Allah, you will hear from the Honorable Louis Farrakhan who will deliver the Savior's Day address, black and white, a solution to the race problem. A Savior is born. So brothers and sisters, sit back, make yourselves comfortable. We would like to begin our program by bringing up our wonderful sister minister, Ava Mohammed, who will give a statement. All praise is due to Allah who will deliver to us a statement on behalf of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam concerning the departure of our late brother, minister, and editor of the Final Call newspaper, Brother Wali Mohammed. So please let us receive our wonderful sister, Minister Ava Mohammed. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. We are grateful to him for raising in our midst the promised Messiah and predicted Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And in this hour of need of deliverance, we thank them for their mercy and our reminder, our brother, our friend, and our leader, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Brothers and sisters, it is wonderful to see you and to once again be in Christ Universal Temple and to thank Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman for her, not only her wonderful hospitality in allowing the Nation of Islam and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan to come here for Savior's Day, but her strength and her display of loyalty, faith, and commitment to the liberation of our people. The loss. Uh, brothers and sisters, I've been asked to um, delay this statement for a short time because the content of what I'm about to say, it is very important that the uh, people who are in the cities across the nation are also allowed to hear this important information and we are told that the transmission is not yet uh, picking up. So I will return uh, to the rostrum at that time. At They're gonna cue us okay, they, they will notify us when it is available. Thank you. Testing one, two, three, four. Can we get some sound? We have sound here, but we want our brothers and sisters all over to get the message. Well, I will briefly go over the program so that we continue to speak so that they may be able to pick up the audio transmission. We will hear uh, the statement by Sister Ava Mohammed. Then we will hear from our wonderful 
uh, trainer and brother who has been training the Honorable Louis Farrakhan into tip-top shape and condition for the past eight months. We're happy to have our brother Tommy Weatherspoon. He will give a statement of the physical shape that our leader, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, is in. And he's in great shape. Great shape. We will hear from our wonderful national spokesman, Minister Ali Mohammed, who is heading and leading in the war and winning the war against the war, the war, winning the war on the AIDS virus that is killing and destroying our people. We will also hear from our sister, Tainetta Mohammed, my mother, the wife of the Honorable Elijah Mohammed. We will also have a very special video presentation for you that gives you an update on the progress of the Nation of Islam for the 1991-92 year. And we have made tremendous progress. Tremendous progress has been made and much, much more progress is needed for 1992. And then we will ask that you help the Honorable Louis Farrakhan by giving whatever contribution or donation you would like to give to the Nation of Islam. And we will hear a musical selection by our wonderful sister, Felicia Clay Evans. And then if it be the will of Allah, which I believe it is his will, we will hear from none other than our leader, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. So we... Mm -hmm. Very well then, let us resume with our program and bring back to the rostrum Sister Minister Ava Mohammed. Thank you. Thank you. The loss of Minister Abdul Wali Mohammed who was not only a minister, but the editor of the Final Call newspaper, which is the largest circulated independently black-owned newspaper in the world, has dealt a tremendous blow, not only to his wife, children, and extended family of the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but to the entire black community. Many of you, as we, who stand with the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and the teachings of the Honorable, Louis, uh, Honorable Elijah Muhammad today, are deeply concerned with what progress has been made in determining the cause of our brother's death. The Nation of Islam secured the services of an independent pathologist to perform an autopsy and conduct a toxicology analysis. By toxicology, we mean a determination of whether a poisonous substance was introduced into the system. We have received both reports from our independent pathologists, and they are under review now by the medical and legal staff. The Lake County, Indiana Coroner's Office has yet to release either an official statement as to the cause of death or a certificate of death setting forth a definite cause. The attorneys for the Nation of Islam, through discussions with representatives of the coroner's office, were advised that by Wednesday, February 26, a conclusion should have been reached as to the specific cause of death. Once a conclusion is reached, the coroner's office is legally mandated to reach a verdict. We will obtain a copy of that verdict to make a comparison between it and our own independent findings. 
and we will then, as quickly as possible, inform you of the final determination in the Final Call newspaper. Our investigation of the actual circumstances surrounding our brother's unexpected death has revealed, according to our investigative and legal staff, a breach of standard of care on the part of those who were responsible for ensuring timely and properly administered emergency medical treatment. And we assure you that the Nation of Islam will not rest until we have obtained an accurate, precise, complete, and satisfactory answer to the questions that have been raised in our investigation. Thank you for your patience. Assalamu alaikum. And now, brothers and sisters, let us please hear from the brother who has been training our leader, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, into tip-top shape. We want him for himself to bear witness to the tremendous progress that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has made, and let him tell you in his own words how strong and well-conditioned the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is. Let us please receive our brother, Brother Tommy Weatherspoon. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. Um, Minister Farrakhan once taught me that God purifies a man through fire. And I've been blessed to, I think, be a part of that purification process for the last eight months. I came here eight months ago to do what I thought would be a real simple job to help Minister Farrakhan get into better condition, to physically and better himself. Uh, two weeks into the routine, he was, as you know, diagnosed with prostate cancer, which made my job a little bit more difficult and I think would have stopped most people from even pursuing a physical regime like we had been on. I remember the day that he was diagnosed with prostate cancer, we sat and we talked for a little while to see what, where this would take us, how our routine would would differ and what we, what we could do. Uh, while we talked, there was a knock at the door and in came a family who had, um, the, who had the minister speak with a relative of theirs who had been diagnosed with AIDS a week beforehand. Well, that family had come in to let the minister know that God had healed their brother. As I sat there and I listened to them talk, I, I said to myself, well, that's all the, the cue I need. I don't believe that God is going to take our brother, um, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, and at the same time work these miracles through him. So as far as I was concerned, my mind was made up and we would continue our routine the same as we had beforehand. As we um, talked that day, the minister asked me, what what I really thought was going on at this time, what God had intended for him. And I said to him that I believe that God was cleaning house. See, the only true house of God is this body. And if this body is not kept, where will God's spirit dwell? So what we did is we set out to build a house. And we took his house and we broke it down. We took the high blood pressure, the the 10 or so pounds of extra weight, and we got rid of it. And then we began to build a foundation that we could continue to build upon, a strong foundation. We do that because, brothers and sisters, you cannot ask your body to do something you have not prepared it to do. And so, as we began our foundation, building our foundation, I would continue to give him we would continue to set goals for him to reach. And the goals that I would set for him were a bit difficult, but I knew what he was trying to accomplish. See, the minister was not out to prove something to himself. This is something I've learned from being with him for the past eight months, that 
He wasn't out to better himself for himself. He was out to condition himself so that he could be an example to me, to you, and to the rest of the nation and the believers. He wanted to be the example. And that's why he put himself through a routine for the last eight months that would correlate to that of some world-class athlete. Eight months later, now, at this point, Minister Farrakhan has the heart rate of a teenager. The cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system of a world-class athlete and is much stronger in much better condition than he's ever been in his life. This is what I believe. Yes, Minister Farrakhan wanted to do this, like I said, to be the example. And along with that example, he has put out there for you and me a tape on self-empowerment through helpful living. In this tape, he discusses what we need to do to clean our house. What I like to, what I wanted to do is let you know about this tape. It is outside. I think the brothers have it at a table or a booth, and it is on sale. You can pick this up after um, the Savior's Day program. But what I really wanted to do was just come along and let you know, you know, what was going on with our brother, um, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I thank you for your time. Assalamu alaikum. As you know, brothers and sisters, the nation of Islam is winning the war on AIDS. And minister, our brother, our very own, brother minister Ali Muhammad, under the direction of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, is head and leading in the most revolutionary treatment modality with our people with the AIDS virus. Let us please receive the national spokesman, the minister Ali Muhammad. Thank you. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the All-Wise, the True, and the Living God, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the God of life, the God who causes death, the God who is the Resurrector of life from death, the God who is the source of all existence, who has been the guardian of generations from the beginning of time. We thank this great God, Allah, for Abraham, who became his friend, who walked upright before God. We thank Allah for Moses. We thank him for Jesus. We thank him for Muhammad, all of whom were healers by the power of God. We thank Allah for our great leader and teacher and guide, his messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and we thank them both for our dear Holy Apostle, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. In their names and in the names of righteous men and women everywhere, those who are living and those who have departed and those who are yet to be born onto the earth, let me offer to you the greeting words of peace. We say in Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. And how's everyone this afternoon on this glorious Savior's Day? I too am fine giving thanks and praise to Allah, working hard in his name, trying to make my word my bond. And what Brother Minister Ishmael Muhammad said is absolutely correct. We are winning the war against AIDS. We're not just in the battle. We're not just in the struggle. But Almighty God, Allah, is blessing us to be the winner in our battle against AIDS. And we know that we can never win the battle against the AIDS virus until we deal with those who are responsible for making the AIDS virus. Because all praise is due to Allah. It is impossible for us to believe that the AIDS virus is something that God created, that he put it in the natural environment uh, to destroy human life. But we know someone is on the planet who has a long history of the destruction of human life. 
All praise is due to Allah. We have in our possession documents released uh, under the Freedom of Information Act that shows that since the early 70s, under the Nixon administration, it has been the, the official policy of this government to commit genocide against non-white people around the earth. And these documents show that it's not only Brent Scowcroft or Henry Kissinger who were responsible for developing these policies, but the present president of the United States, George Bush, played a leading role in developing a policy of genocide against non-white people all over this earth. And we believe that the AIDS virus is a direct consequence of their plotting and planning in secret, which was revealed to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who years and years ago warned us of a secret plot by this government to destroy the black nation. I want to thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for inspiring me to go to medical school. I never thought that I had the qualification to do anything like that. I never thought I had the intelligence or the talent to do something like that. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam. And we can prove this in no limit of time. And if mathematics is the foundation of all science, then by our very nature, we are created to master any area of science, any area of technology. All praise is due to Allah. And so I wrote to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to ask him whether or not medicine was something that a follower of his should think about uh, as a career. He answered me in a very brief letter that I will never forget. He said, brother, we need everything in the building of a nation. You know what you are qualified to do. May Allah bless you with success. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That was 20 years ago. And now I feel extremely blessed because recently I had a dream where I was trying to practice medicine, but there was something that was blocking my ability. And then a mentor came into the hospital setting where this dream was taking place. And when I looked over my shoulder to see who it was that was my mentor, I saw the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> and so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, they are leading the way. If we are winning the war against AIDS today, it is because Minister Farrakhan sent myself and Abdul Wali Muhammad to Nairobi, Kenya to bring back the actual facts. Our brothers in Kenya at the Kenyan Medical Research Institute have developed something that is 97% uh, effective in reversing the signs and symptoms of AIDS. And they have tested it out. They've tested it out scientifically on more than 3,000 patients, and they have been able to keep people well under this treatment for more than two and a half years after the treatment stops. Allah blessed us to bring some of this medication back. I actually smuggled it. Why? Why smuggle it? because it's not approved by our government. Our government that is probably responsible for the AIDS virus does not want a cure for the AIDS virus in this country. But all praise is due to Allah. We will deliver this medication to all that need it. In my conclusion, let me say very briefly that what the challenge is and it is the ultimate challenge to the black nation. They, uh, the World Health Organization has predicted that by the end of this decade, by the 21st century, as many as 50 million people on the face of this planet will be infected with the HIV virus and expected to die, and 30 to 40 million of that number on the African continent. 
But if we can administer to them 180 of these tablets over a six-month period of time, then we will save those lives. And so the challenge for you and I, brother and sister, is will we rise to the challenge and save 50 million lives by producing 9 billion of these tablets and distributing to them, them to our people all over the earth? By Allah, we will do exactly that. I thank you. May Allah bless you and keep you. As-salamu alaykum. All praise is due to Allah. Continuing into our program, let us please hear from our wonderful sister, my mother, the aunt, sister, Tainetta Muhammad. You see, I want to hear from the minister so bad. It's all right. As-salamu <clears throat> alaykum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanin Ar-Rahim We give all praise to Almighty God Allah alone who came to us here in the wilderness of North America in the person of the great Mahdi Master Farad Muhammad who planted in the hearts and souls of our people who were dying in the streets in the mud of civilization planted the seeds for our rebirth and our resurrection which is taking place all over America and all over the world today. We have very, very little time, brothers and sisters, to make our final decision. We can see the environmental holocaust taking place all around us. We see that the ozone depletion in the Arctic and Arctic is moving at a rapid pace. The greenhouse effect and the poisoning of our atmosphere, which is giving us a harder time to compensate, to stand up for the assault or against the assault of Satan, who is the ruler of this present world. Because our beloved minister Farrakhan is most anxious to begin immediately in bringing us into the next stage of our resurrection, which is to reach out to all four corners of this planet Earth. I will not delay the time any longer, but I remind each and every one of us that as the angel stood up in the 10th chapter, 6th verse of Revelation, and he pointed his hands to the heavens, and he said, time that we have known, we shall know no more. And as we have been exploited by the movement of Western civilization through the Gregorian calendar, through the Pope of Rome, under the dominance of the Catholic and the Christian religion in the West, now Almighty Allah has manifested himself in the West to break the hold of Satan's civilization and bring us back again into the natural order of our own civilization of peace and righteousness. So I thank Allah that we have gathered together today in Christ Universal Church to be able to receive this powerful message from our beloved leader and teacher, Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. I pray Allah that you are blessed with a continual good strength, health, and happiness as I greet you in the nation's greetings of peace and paradise. I salam alaikum.
just to cheer
Brothers and sisters, the moment that we have been waiting for, it is my honor to bring before you the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, the man of the hour, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Brothers and sisters. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. I thank him over and over again for raising up in our midst a divine leader, teacher, and guide. The man who taught me what I know and the man who gave me the example of the man I hope to become, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Words are not adequate to express my joy at being here today with you at Christ Universal Temple, a magnificent structure led by one of the most profound women of our time, Dr. Johnny Coleman. We are honored to be here. It is warm and the house is filled to capacity and the annex is filled, every room is filled and unfortunately we had to send approximately four to 5,000 people away. It is demonstrative of the fact that people want to know. I want to say before I get into my subject, I want to thank, first of all, all of the laborers of Islam who are watching this by satellite in five major centers of the United States. And there are some watching in Mexico, in the Caribbean, in Africa, and maybe in other parts of the world. All of you who have helped me this past year by selling a newspaper or giving in charity or talking to another brother or sister about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I cannot say enough. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your support. Thank you for enduring what we as Muslims have to endure if we are to uh, enjoy the crown. There are a lot of people who want the crown but run away from the cross. And unfortunately, you cannot attain the crown unless you accept the cross. And as a Muslim, some would say, well, how could you as a Muslim talk about accepting the cross? I'm not accepting a symbol. The symbol has deep, significant meaning. The cross was a symbol of suffering. And unless the righteous are willing to endure suffering in a world of evil for righteousness sake, then we will not be worthy to wear the crown. That's right. So to run from suffering is to run from the crown. To run from pain is to run from the crown.